And for more perspective on the developments in Russia, let's now bring in Marcus Papadopoulos. He's an historian, analyst, and author specializing in Russia and the former Soviet Union. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. The last 48 hours have really been remarkable, and I think everyone wants to know what the real catalyst was for this dramatic about turn that we saw. Putin, in his address to the nation, launched a scathing attack on Prigozhin, accusing him of treason. Now he's facing no criminal charges. How much long-term damage has this short-lived revolt done to Putin's reputation? Has it, and does he wake up now facing a new reality that maybe his grip has weakened? Allow me, first of all, to clarify the status of Wagner. Whilst Wagner is officially speaking a private military contractor, in reality, Wagner is controlled by the Russian Defense Ministry and Russian intelligence services, such as the FSB, SVR, and GRU. No different to how Academy, previously known as Blackwater, is controlled by the Pentagon and American intelligence services, such as the CIA. So, in essence, there is no difference between Wagner and Academy. Now, turning to the recent developments concerning Wagner, there are more questions than answers. But let's assume, for the sake of argument, that it was not a case of Maskarovka. Let's say that it was a rebellion by Prigozhin, or even worse, a, an attempt at a coup by Prigozhin. Well, there are some very major questions which have to be addressed. First of all, why didn't Prigozhin call on Russian soldiers to defect? Why didn't he call on Russian governors to defect? And why didn't he call on ordinary Russians to take to the streets? Also, in his address to the nation, Putin did not explicitly name Prigozhin. If Prigozhin was a traitor, why didn't Putin name him? Furthermore, why is it that elements of the Wagner force were able to travel unimpeded all the way from the Donbass to Rostov, given that there is a massive Russian military presence in the Donbass and also in Rostov. On top of that, again, how were elements of Wagner able to um, travel from Rostov to Lipetsk, a Russian city? That is a very considerable distance. And again, the Russian military presence there is enormous. That is why I say we should be very cautious about what has happened and we should not rule out the possibility that it was a case of Maskarovka, meaning Russian military deception. But whatever it was, it has had no impact on the Russian military campaign in Ukraine. It will not conceal the calamity of the so-called Ukrainian counteroffensive in Zaporozhye, which, over after four weeks now, has incurred the deaths of thousands and thousands of Ukrainian soldiers and the destruction of hundreds upon hundreds of Ukrainian armored vehicles, including German leopard tanks and American Bradley fighting vehicles. And finally, whatever happens with Wagner, it will not alter the eventual outcome of the war in Ukraine, which will be a Russian military victory there. Oh, thank you so much. Only about 30 seconds left, but want to get in one quick question. The U.S. Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, says this sudden truce and about face is far from over, and it's just a matter of time before we see how Putin reacts. Do you agree to that, and do you think Putin could face more threats after these events? No, I do not whatsoever. Given that Wagner is now being transferred to Belarus, tells me that it is possible, just possible, that Wagner could spearhead an assault on the Ukrainian capital, Kiev. Antony Blinken, like the rest of the American government, understands that the Russian military cannot be defeated in Ukraine, and the day will come when Ukraine ceases to exist, when most of the country, or um, all of it, will be absorbed into the Russian Federation. We will have to see how it all plays out. There are certainly more questions than answers right now. But Marcus Papadopoulos, thank you so much for your time.